Gentrification is a process of change whereby affluent residents move into a previously impoverished neighborhood, substantially raising property values, which often leads to a change in the character of the community by displacing longtime residents. Gentrification can create further racial disparities in home ownership and lead to more racially segregated neighborhoods. Gentrification is partly fueled by historic policies of racial exclusion, preventing African Americans and other minorities from owning property. Policies such as racial covenants, clauses written into property deeds that prohibited their sale to African Americans, and redlining, whereby the Federal Housing Authority, or FHA, effectively denied insured loans to minority applicants because of their race. In the 1930s and 1940s, the FHA primarily insured loans only to white applicants in white neighborhoods, advising against any incompatible racial groups from living in the same communities. The FHA spurred suburbanization mostly by insuring loans only for the homes in suburban areas, where white-only neighborhoods were being built while routinely denying insuring loans to blacks who lived in inner-city minority neighborhoods. At the end of World War II, the VA guaranteed home loans to returning white GIs promising no money down and low interest rates. At the same time, most black veterans were denied VA loans due to redlining policies that prohibited banks from lending to African Americans. While the 1930s and 1940s offered a chance for white homeowners to own property and accumulate wealth, Many black Americans were forced into rent-dependent housing, first in inner-city slums with inflated rental rates specifically targeting African Americans, and then into public housing, which concentrated poverty and furthered segregated neighborhoods. This has created a lasting national wealth gap between blacks and whites, with white median wealth being 12 times higher than black median wealth. owing to the distinction that two-thirds of all wealth is tied to home equity value. In Norfolk, Virginia, many of the national segregationist policies played out on the neighborhood level in Ghent and East Ghent, the section bordered by Colonial Avenue, Olney Road, Granby Street, and 21st Street. Originally an affluent white suburb, Ghent grew to prominence in the early 20th century as new trolley cars helped ferry whites from downtown Norfolk into the white-only suburbs of Ocean View, Larchmont, Edgewater, and Ghent. World War II then saw much of Ghent's historic single-family homes converted into segregated wartime housing for the Naval Yards. After World War II, Ghent grew increasingly run down as many of Ghent's white residents moved out to the racially controlled suburbs in Virginia Beach and Chesapeake, as well as to Larchmont and Edgewater, all made possible by specially insured loans from the VA. Black veterans returning to Norfolk who were denied VA loans and prohibited from buying property in white neighborhoods moved into crowded slums in downtown Norfolk, Atlantic City, North Ghent, West Ghent, East Ghent, and Ghent proper. As the Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority kicked off its urban renewal programs in 1949, slum housing started to come down and public housing for African Americans was built in its place in Tidewater Park, Young Park, and Calvert Square. In that process, federal governmental policy required that all public housing for blacks be built in already black majority neighborhoods, and already economically struggling neighborhoods became even poorer. When Virginia was faced with school integration in 1959, the slums continued to come down, but public housing was no longer being built. Instead, many demolished homes were paved over with industrial parks and schools to act as buffer zones, specifically designed to keep neighborhoods segregated. Atlantic City, now Fort Norfolk, saw its growing racially integrated neighborhoods demolished in order to build factories to keep black neighborhoods from mixing with white neighborhoods. And North Ghent 
was redeveloped as a majority white neighborhood in order to keep Maury High School and Blair Middle School majority white schools. With a lack of new public housing projects and acts of violence carried out against black families who tried to move into white neighborhoods, housing disparities became even more dramatic as black poverty was further concentrated in increasingly smaller slums and limited public housing options. In the 1960s, when the NRHA declared Ghent a conservation zone, the FHA began issuing federally insured loans almost exclusively available only to white buyers. Many black families ineligible for FHA insured loans were forced out of Ghent as white families began to buy up deteriorated houses, renovate the neighborhood, and substantially raise property values. Gentrification became gentrification, earning Norfolk the All-American City Award from Look Magazine. Many of Ghent's black residents moved to East Ghent, a majority black neighborhood where more than half of its 1,000 homes were declared substandard. By the 1970s, as part of its urban renewal program, the NRHA annexed the entirety of East Ghent and quickly demolished nearly every building. The NRHA promised the black community they would build low-income housing in its place and that the residents could come back once the redevelopment project was finished. But instead, the NRHA, claiming federal funds for the project had dried up, resold East Ghent to private developers who built expensive homes. With many black residents unable to return to East Ghent, a substantial number left Norfolk. The lasting effect of discriminatory housing policies can still be seen in Norfolk today. With few opportunities to own property in Norfolk, many black residents were forced into public housing. While Norfolk is a minority city, nearly half black and half white, the legacy of segregated housing has contributed to a growing wealth gap where over half of all those living below the poverty line are black. Eviction rates among the highest in our nation are evidence of a pronounced rental instability, disproportionately impacting African Americans and other minorities. And in East Ghent, where urban renewal took place, the median income is seven times higher than in Tidewater, where public housing was built, where many of Norfolk's schools remain de facto segregated, and where the neighborhood is in the top 10 for incarceration rates in the country. Norfolk's history of segregation has cemented a lack of community trust from failed redevelopment programs in the past. And on the verge of Norfolk's changing tides, our time, our land, and our options are running out.